Hi there guys, it's Rick Graham here and welcome to Legato Workout Part 2. I hope you enjoyed Legato Workout Part 1. Um, that was an extremely successful lesson um, and I've got you guys to thank for that. You know, if it wasn't for you guys supporting what I do, the content that I put out there, then I wouldn't be sat here doing it. So really from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody that supports what I do. And don't worry, there's lots more content coming this year. So make sure you stay tuned. Um, so we're gonna, in this lesson, we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at my approach to legato technique. Um, some of the things that I use to, to in order to improve my, you know, constantly trying to improve my legato techniques. It's one of those things, obviously, like the guitar, you never master, you just keep on trying to improve. Um, so I'm going to talk you through some of those things. <clears throat> the other thing is that I'm focusing on in this lesson is the subject of muted legato technique. And that's been something that I have had tons and tons of questions about. So I thought I'd um, explain my specific approach to muted legato technique within this lesson. So I've prepared for you um, some examples and some licks and uh, uh, I play them once normally, <laughs> in other words, unmuted, and then again with muted legato technique. So that really is the focus on this particular lesson. So the first thing I want to take a look at are the general legato practice methods that I use. Uh, and there are basically two different approaches when it comes to practicing legato. Um, one of them, the first one, is standard legato technique and by standard legato what I mean is the general rock style legato where we pick the first note on every new string. Uh, it's kind of Satriani Vi-esque approach to it, you know, so... You know, that kind of thing. Um, and what we're doing is when we get to a new string we use the pick to uh, allow the string to vibrate so that we can hammer on and pull off on that string. And then whenever we go to a new string, we do the same thing, we pick that note. Uh, the issue that I've always found there is it kind of disrupts the flow of the legato. Uh, it doesn't, to my ears at least, it doesn't sound as smooth as it could. So even though it's a very, very useful technique, I still use it now, so I'm not saying don't use it, um, but that's not the only way to approach, to approach legato technique and legato practice. Um, so the other method which I find is quite challenging but extremely rewarding and sounds a lot smoother to me is left hand only legato technique. Um, and this isn't to necessarily to be confused with the hammer on only approach that some players use. I generally tend to use a mixture of hammer ons and pull offs when I'm, uh, when I'm doing this. Uh, but there are benefits of hammer on uh, only hammer ons when you're practicing legato technique. And uh, in fact, some of the examples and licks that we've got, I've notated them specifically for that so that you can practice that technique. Anyway, I'm digressing slightly. So standard rock legato technique, the downsides with this, like I said, is that when you go to a new string, you have a pick stroke to get the string vibrating and that can kind of disrupt the smooth flow of the legato line. Um, so when you're, for instance, when you're practicing, say, uh, a scale, Let's keep it in the, the key that we're using um, all of the examples for, so, which is B major. Um, okay, that sounds okay, but it is a little bit. It is a little bit, um, like I said, that, that the smoothness of the legato is affected somewhat. Um, so what I try and do is I try and minimize the movement that I make or the, um, the accenting with the right hand because whenever we put a pick stroke in there you can really hear it, especially if you're doing down strokes, it's less so with up strokes. But what we want to do when we're playing uh, standard rock legato technique, what I try and work on is making sure the pick attack is as light as possible with the right hand. So what we want to avoid is clunk, 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 
clunk like that because that's really going to break up that sound that we want. We want a nice smooth transition from one note to the next and we want to try and avoid any separation where possible between the notes. So I like to keep it extremely light with the right hand. So I suggest just for this example we're just using a straightforward three note per string major scale B major. Um, what I'll do is downstrokes on uh, when we ascend and then upstrokes when we descend. But what you can do is upstrokes. Oh, sorry. Because when you do upstrokes, obviously it's a weaker attack um, when you're playing the strings. Um, so that helps to alleviate the problem of unnecessary accenting between notes when we cross strings. So that's something that you can think about. If, you're, if you prefer to just do a downstroke when you're crossing strings, uh, then make sure you keep that movement nice and light. Okay. So, like I say, I still practice um, using standard legato technique. Um, however, um, the biggest emphasis with my legato technique is placed on left hand only practice. Okay, and I found that when I started to practice just left hand only, my legato playing improved dramatically. So these days I try and um, work on it every single day so that I can improve my legato technique in general. Okay, so what do I mean by left hand only? We literally mean we're not going to use any pick stroke with the right hand whatsoever to get the notes ringing. So if we take a straightforward B major scale. <laughs> Okay, first thing, did you notice how clean that sounded? Because that's what we've got to aim for. Very little extraneous noise going on there, and I'm not using a string dampener either. Um, nothing wrong with string dampeners, but I think if you want to improve your technique, you know, you need to tackle the issue rather than find something else to make it easier. Uh, but those things, they're cool, you know, if you want to use them, and they're great for recording purposes as well. Uh, but yeah, we're not using them uh, in this lesson, or I don't use them at all. Um, so, yes, notice how clean it was there. Uh, we've got to employ a solid muting technique when it comes to left-hand legato. We, we need it with standard legato technique and just playing in general. But it's really highlighted when you're just using the left-hand only especially between string crosses, because string crossing is a proverbial pain in the ass. Um, so it's going to take a lot of work and you have to do it every single day in order to see improvements in your playing. So like I said before, it's not just hammer-ons only. Usually when I ascend, obviously it's hammer-ons. Um, <laughs> And then pulling off when we descend. Again, absolutely no noise there whatsoever. And that's down to muting technique, which we will cover. So, um, yeah, those are the two main approaches that I use.